Hey friend, in this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to use one brush, the size 12 round brush from Heritage 4050 series from Princeton for this entire piece. And we're gonna start using wet and wet for a nice sunset gradient background for this piece. And then once that dries, we're gonna use wet and dry to paint in this palm leaf. So we have a nice little sunset or dusky moment happening uh, for this tutorial. Super easy, really fun, and only one brush. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna use my Canson cold press paper and we are only, for this tutorial, we're only going to be using one of the brushes from our, from our kit. So I'm gonna be using the round size 12 the entire time. And we're gonna be painting a big wash of some kind of dusky sky with a palm branch in front of it that we're gonna wait for the sky to dry first and then we're gonna paint this um, dark palm leaf on top of it using wet and dry. But first I'm going to load up my size 12 brush with a lot of water and I'm just going to start painting in some water in the top left corner. If you're left-handed, you'll probably start in the top right-hand corner. Um, but I'm gonna go down to about here with just water and then I'm gonna grab some of this cobalt color and maybe a touch of the purple and just kind of plug it in at the top here and let it seep into or bloom into the water. Wet and wet technique is going to allow for your lines to be soft and diffused, kind of like if you're sketching something and you're shading, um, you can release pressure on your pencil and have a nice gradual gradient effect with your shading. That's what we're doing with wet and wet technique. So I'm gonna grab more of that color and while it's still wet, you need to make sure that you're working quickly because if it's dry, it's not gonna have this blurred effect, effect to the edge. It's gonna be a hard line. So I'm gonna come in here and just kind of help it blend a little bit down into the rest of the water area and keep working my way down. I might do some, some swoopy, curvy motions here instead of just straight lines. Maybe a little bit more blue around here. Leaving gaps for little pokes of clouds. And then I'm just grabbing more water as I work my way down to make sure that this area is staying super wet so that I can add different colors as I go along using wet and wet. Now I might grab some pink, a little touch of orange. Nice sunsetty sky. And then grab water and bring that down. Oh, that's fun. So just have fun with it. Watch the colors explode. And I'm just gonna go from like a blue purple to pink. I might poke in some orange and then some yellow for a really tropical sunsetty sky, really vibrant sunset. And we're just gonna be peeking through a palm branch. Once this part dries, I'm gonna paint in a palm tree or a palm leaf. I've got this yellow here and it has a little bit of green on top. So I'm just gonna grab water and lift that green up with my brush so that I get more of that yellow underneath. And wipe it off, wipe off the yellow green on my paper towel and grab more water in between to keep lifting it. That's my top or maybe a touch of this orange color to warm it up a little bit more. Then I'm gonna plug in the yellow here. If areas of your base start to dry quickly, you can always go back on top of it and do this kind of swirly motion with your brush and water.
final edge. I might make it a little blue down here again in this corner. Just a really light blue though. So I'm just gonna dab my brush, do a little poke, and then kind of brush it in and mix it in with the yellow. Okay, so now we're gonna wait for this to dry and I'm gonna paint a black palm leaf on top because it's sunset, we're behind, or the palm leaf is in front of us blocking the light. So we've got the shadow side of the leaf. So we're just gonna do a dark black uh, palm leaf with the same brush once this is all dry. All right, so now that this is mostly dry, again, if you want to not have the warpiness that I have, this Canson pad is just a pad, so it's only glued at the top. So you can take out your top sheet that you're painting on and tape it down on all four sides with artist tape. Up to you if you wanna keep it flat. But this base layer is dry, so now we're gonna use wet and dry with the same size 12 brush from Princeton Heritage 4050 series. And I'm gonna load up with black. I'm only gonna be using mostly the tip and probably a, the first third of the belly of the brush. So I don't need to load the entire hair of the brush um, with this paint. And then I'm just going to come over here and use the side of the brush at about a 35 degree angle away from my paper and bring in a stem or the main branch of the palm leaf using a C curve. So with little to no pressure, you'll get those thin strokes because a round brush has a fine point. If you put pressure on that fine point, it's gonna fan out and get really wide. So I've got this fine point, a thin stroke C curve for my main branch. And then I'm just going to, using about a 75 degree angle with my brush, with little to no pressure on my brush, I'm going to bring out these C curves from that main branch like so. And then about an inch and a half away from the main branch is when I'm gonna start adding pressure. So I'm applying pressure to that brush and then gradually releasing that pressure so it gets thin again. So the pressure on the brush means the hair is gonna fan out, get thick, and then I'm gonna gradually release that pressure so I can use just the tip again for a one stroke leaf. Then I'm gonna do this again. I'm making sure to curve away from my main branch instead of in. Um, I think it just looks better that way. And I'm just going to have leaves that fall across the main stem or branch. Some are overlapping others. But it's all about thin to pressure and then release of pressure to get it, these leaves to look that way. can have a little bended leaf, which will be, let me do that slower. It will start thin with little to no pressure using the point of the brush, add pressure, release pressure, and then before you lift off, add pressure again, and then release that pressure. So it's a little bendy. If your leaves are getting kind of puddles at the tip of your leaf, just make sure to go to your paper towel before you paint and blot the excess water off. Once I get all the way up this branch, I'm going to go back in and add some leaves into some of these sparse areas. Because palm trees have really, really dense branches with a lot of leaves on them. I'm gonna use this thin line here as the top leaf. So I'm gonna go back here 
See these shorter leaves down at the bottom so it kind of tapers. You want to make sure with these strokes too, this is a compound stroke because you're going from pressure to release of pressure. You want to make sure that you have a good amount of water so that the mobility of the brush is efficient and works with you. If it's too dry, it's going to get stuck and not come back to a really thin point. But if it's too wet, then you're going to have puddles and it's just gonna look really odd. So you gotta find a balance. That balance is kind of tricky at first, so stick with it. There you have it. Uh, I hope you had fun with that quick and easy tutorial using, like I said, one round brush. That's all it takes sometimes, and it you can come up with this beautiful masterpiece. So give it to a friend, hang it up in your room. Anyway, I hope you had fun, like I did. I always have fun. And chalk it up to muscle memory if you're disappointed with how it turned out. Keep practicing, because it does get easier and it does get better and more comfortable. I hope you love this tutorial, and happy painting.